Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So now that you understand a bit more about blocks and how they relate to each other and chain together, let's take a look at what blocks look like and how to interact with them on the blockchain and pull back the relevant data. So we need to do a little bit of setup first. So the first thing we're gonna do is install some of the packages that you need. So the two things that I'm gonna be using the most are .env, which pulls in environment variables. You can just do npm install .env. And then the other one you're gonna need is ethers, so just ethers. And once you install those, you should be good to go. Obviously you need node installed and NPM installed. You should have all of those installed if you've been following through any of the other parts of the series. So once those are installed, we then need to grab an Infura URL. We use Infura to talk with the blockchain as a very easy way without having to set up our own geth nodes and all these other things, which you would want if you want more performance because you're doing a real project. But for our purposes, this works great. So you can just sign up at infura.io. You can then create a project, create new project, go into the settings. And once you hop into the settings, you're gonna see down here, there is endpoints, select mainnet, and then select, we're going to be using the WSS, which is the WebSockets. You can just copy that. And then you can just do export, and then type in your variable name. We're gonna use WSS Infura equals, and then just paste in that WSS URL and hit enter, and then it will be an environment variable on your system. Once you do that, then we can get into some coding. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up a template that we'll use for all of our other coding. That's just the base template. So we don't have to keep doing it over and over again. We can just copy paste that template and then put in our meaningful code, right? So let's open up our editor. I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to create a new file. We'll call it template.js. And then I'm just going to minimize this. Make sure this is a little bigger for you guys. So the first thing we need in this template are our require statements for the various libraries we're gonna use, which would be the ones we installed, the .env to bring in our environment variables, which would be our WebSockets in Fura variable, as well as the ethers in order to talk to the blockchain through that WebSocket URL. So much like in the web3.js videos, we need to require and we're gonna do dot env and we just go dot config, right? So that's all we have to do and now we can use environment variables within our actual code. And this actually needs two parentheses there. So next we need to actually import our ethers library. Now in order to do that, since we haven't seen that before, we'll take a look really quick. So in the documentation for ethers, you'll see all you have to do is create a variable ethers, const ethers, and then require ethers. And then we can use all the functionality from ethers. So that's pretty simple as well. So we could type that out in here and say const ethers. And in JavaScript, const is just the way that you create a variable, like a constant variable, in case you're not familiar with JavaScript. But I assume if you are doing this tutorial, you are familiar with some sort of programming. Otherwise, this is probably not the right place to start. So once those are actually created, now we can use those in our actual template. So the first thing we need in our template after the imports is a way to connect to the blockchain. So we're gonna create a provider URL. So if we look at the ethers documentation again, and we go to the getting started here, you'll see there is a constant provider. So we create a provider variable and we do new ethers providers and then whatever way we're gonna do it. And then we can put in our actual connection string there. So we're going to use a WebSocket provider. This is showing the JSON RPC provider. You can also use that in certain cases, but we're gonna use the WebSocket one. So we're gonna use the same exact thing they had there and say const provider equals new 
ethers.providers.webSocket provider. And then from there, we're just going to use our environment variable that we created already with the export statement. So we're gonna say process.env, and that's how to use that .env import. And we're gonna say infura underscore ws, or whatever it is that you labeled that, right? So now once that's there, we can use that provider variable to talk to the blockchain. So let's create a asynchronous function that we can use in order to do that. So we'll say const do something, and this will be the function that we call, and this will be an asynchronous function. So that way we can do asynchronous calls because on the blockchain, we have to wait for things to come back and that allows us to do that. And then within our asynchronous function, we're going to use an await statement. So we'll say something like const my variable equals await, and that'll wait for that thing to come back and then whatever that is. And we use our variable provider dot whatever function we're calling. So we'll say some function, which doesn't actually exist, but we're just creating a template that we can use over and over again. Now, once this is all created, we need to call that function. So it'll be like do something and we'll just call the function. So this is a template that we can use over and over again, and we're just going to replace the stuff within this function and name that function something relevant, right? So we're just gonna recap really quick. So we created two imports for our .env and for our ethers. This allows us to use ethers to talk to the blockchain, and the .env allows us to grab our environment variables, which we did right here, to create our provider URL that allows us to talk to the blockchain. Now we have an asynchronous function that allows us to wait for responses. And within that function, we have to use the await statement when we're doing things. So that's our template. Now we're gonna use that over and over again. The first thing we're gonna do in the next video now is we are going to call some blocks, look at some information within some blocks. So let's hop over into that.